Hey guys, Dave Anderson here, Heli Cool Selly Pad. Well, it's another rainy day here in Western Washington. You're probably thinking, Dave, when is it not a rainy day? Well, okay, okay, I get it. Yes, it rains a lot here, but everything also is very green. I call this a special episode because I put together a four part mini series on how to build the Globe Trekker subframe build. And I put it on the uh, Facebook page. But I want to share that with you because, well, number one, it shows off a little bit of the uh, marketing skill that I have for you. But also, it tells a story that might interest you in what you're going to be doing with your LMTV. If you have any plans to do any kind of camper mods with it. So stay tuned for this awesome four-part mini build all in one video. Congratulations on your purchase of a Globe Trekker zero torsion subframe. Globe Trekker was founded by FMTV owners, engineers, and expedition enthusiasts, and was born out of the necessity to provide quality and lasting value in overland expedition products to the DIY builder. Even if you are having your expedition vehicle built by professionals, rest assured. We believe you have made the best choice in quality and value. Ask for Globe Trekker products by name. Start with a clean frame. Relocate needed components for the operation of the vehicle so that the subframe and subsequent habitat will remain clear from contact. Carefully look over the diagrams provided and familiarize yourself with bolt, washer, and nut stackups. This would also be a good time to ensure that all of your components are accounted for. Report any missing or damaged parts to Globe Trekker without delay. You may download the terms of service from the website at www.rvglobetrekker.com. Keep in mind that many of the parts seen here will be fully assembled for your convenience. Prep the frame of the vehicle by placing at least two 4x4 posts that are long enough to span the frame. Use the post as temporary shoring material to rest the subframe on for positioning and placement of the subframe brackets. With the aid of a few friends, lift the subframe chest high and position it on top of the 4x4 posts, roughly in the location of where you want the subframe to be attached. Locate the front of the subframe with the rear of the cab, keeping in mind the positioning of the habitat on the subframe. The 2x4 gives a visual reference of the position of the habitat, which is measured 25 and a half inches from the forwardmost center cross member of the subframe. Add in the distance from the back of the cab to locate the subframe's position on the truck frame's rails. The distance you require may vary. All right, what we got here is a three point front mount and you have a full 12 inches of travel that you can adjust where you would like your pivot point to be located so it will actually clear any kind of subframe connectors, any kind of brackets you might have. If you opt to do the four point, you actually can move the bracket here to the center and you have almost a full 24 inches of adjustment where you can locate it based upon the center of the other pivots. For three point systems, position the rear pivot mount one cross member forward of the rearmost subframe cross member, aligned with the pre drilled holes in the frame. Position the four point system pivot on the longitudinal center cross member of the subframe shown here. Temporarily loosely bolt the bracketry to the subframe, aligned with the pre drilled holes in the frame. Confirm the positioning of the subframe on the truck, both lengthwise and side to side for correctness and centering. Anytime you make an adjustment to the position of the subframe, reconfirm the position of the subframe from all remaining measuring points. In part one, we laid out the subframe in the exact position we wanted it to reside with the brackets attached, and we are ready to mark and drill the truck's frame rails to create attaching points. Let's get started. It is important to note that the side brackets, whether installing as a three point or four point system, must be mounted directly across from one another. Use a pencil or length of masking tape to mark the sides of the brackets to ensure their position is well noted. Then use shoring material as necessary to center the side brackets on the upper frame. If mounting the subframe to a vehicle such as a Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Unimog, etc., the subframe will need to be leveled with the truck's frame. 
Now that the brackets have been located on the frame, it is time to mark and drill the holes in the truck frame. The best way to do this is to use a center punch that is correctly sized to the holes already fabricated into the mounting brackets. For added precision, mark any two holes onto the frame from each bracket, then remove the bracket. Move the subframe a few feet towards the rear of the truck to provide ample space to drill the holes. And drill the two marks starting with a smaller drill bit. Step up the sizes of the drill bits until the desired size hole in the truck frame is reached. Use a cup of oil and small utility brush to lubricate the end of the drill bit to prevent overheating of the bit. Depending on the placement of your side brackets, you may need to remove the battery from the truck for ease of access. Once any two holes have been drilled into the frame for each bracket, bolt up the bracket and mark the remaining bracket holes onto the frame with the center punch. Then, remove the bracket and complete the drilling for the remaining bracket holes. After you have finished drilling all the holes for the side brackets, install the hardware as shown in the provided documentation. Reinstall the side mounted brackets and swivel them to one side. Welcome to part 3 of the Globe Trekker Zero Torsion Subframe Build. In part 2, we discuss the proper way to mount the side brackets to the frame of the truck that you are working with. Now we are ready to mark and drill the holes in the pivot base that are aligned with the truck frame. You have a couple of options at this point. Bill will discuss them with you. So this is a universal cross member. You see it's a little bit wider than what I actually need, so I actually drill the holes. The goal is this will actually accommodate 48 inch wide subframes frames, and narrower. So you have an opportunity to use it for pretty much any vehicle. Okay, so with every expedition, there is a uh, expectation of ruggedness and severe duty with ever losing or breaking, having any troubles in the field. So I'm going to use the long length of this to actually build a secondary gusset using these holes that connects it to the frame that will prevent the loading on the bolts and actually allow the loading to be on the side of the frame. This will help transfer that forces and loads that we can't predict it sometimes. So one design feature of Globe Trekker is modularity and flexibility. So we are giving everybody an option to tailor to fit their needs. This is designed to accommodate 40 inch wide frames and network. I'm going to utilize it as a option to actually include, include another gusset here so I can actually put my loading on the side of the frame instead of just in the hardware on the top. So I'm gonna build a gusset that actually bolts in here that will connect to the side of the frame as well. I'm gonna utilize the whole piece. It gives me more strength, it gives me more rigidity for the frame, um, and that's independent of the frame. So the frame will still twist and I got no concerns on the field. With all of that, you've got the option and options of doing what you wanna do. So I told you my option. Your option is you can even cut this flush and weld it on if you wanted to. Cut it flush, bolt it on. You've got the options and flexibility to do anything you wish. Everything I like to do has got a second option and a second backup fail safe. Once the cross member and truck frame have been drilled, insert and tighten down the hardware provided to 40 foot pounds of torque. There's a shaft collar that we will put on here that will actually lock this in the right position so the whole frame will not shift from side to side. In addition to preventing this from going side to side and not put all the side loading onto the shaft collar alone, we also have a secondary pivot containment that goes inside of the frame. So on the three point, not the four point, only on the three point, this will bolt up inside the frame. You'll, sh you'll size this to your frame side and this will go on the side. And the beauty of this is, this gives you full rotational positional of up to the 12 degrees that we're talking about, in addition to letting the whole frame flex, but prevent it from going from side to side. I've decided to put my pivot point brace that I just explained here. And so I measured where my subframe bracket is gonna be made, which is right here in this spot. I measured to the center, which is where I wanna put this, is 12 inches. So I marked 12 inches over from the center of the pivot to my hole that I want to drill. And so I will drill a hole here before I put the frame in place and that will allow me to bolt this here in that position. Measure and mark the heim joint location on both sides of the frame. These hole positions should be directly across from one another. 
Insert the heim joints into the holes and hand tighten. Now that the heim joints are in place, it is time to walk the frame onto the brackets. Bolt the brackets onto the subframe with the hardware provided in the bolt, nut, and washer stack given in the subframe documentation, torquing the nuts to 40 foot-pounds. The crossmember pivot bracket comes with a double redundant set screw on the front and rear of the pivot pin bracket. Check to ensure these set screws are firmly seated with an appropriately sized Allen wrench. Welcome to part four of the Globe Trekker Zero Torsion Subframe Build. In part three, we discussed the crossmember pivot attaching options, bolted the heim joints to the truck frame, and attached the brackets to the subframe. In part four, we will complete the Globe Trekker Zero Torsion Subframe Build. Let's get started. We're gonna actually have to cut our all thread to the right size because the, it accommodates a lot of different frame widths. And so what I've done, what we decided to do is measure the distance from here to this hole here and then that will be the distance I shorten this shaft and then when I get it bolted together you can actually micro adjust the shaft into position because you can mount it on the inside the outside wherever you need to in the frame this is actually built in one assembly and for me it's easier just to measure the distance I need to shorten it take it back off shorten it and put it back on for the LMTV on this particular frame this bolt needs to go in this hole. These two bushings will slide up inside here. So I need to bring this all the way over to here. So I just measure that distance, 11 inches, and I'm gonna shorten this shaft and let 11 inches, and then put it back in. Mark and cut off the extra all thread length with an angle grinder or chop saw. Use a file to remove the resulting burr. As we reassemble this, we're gonna screw the shafts back in the time joints. It's always good to use a little bit of Loctite. Make sure that things don't come apart out in the field. Install the subframe end heim joint with the spacers and washer and nut stack up depicted in the documentation diagram. Torque the remaining hardware to 40 foot pounds. The last and final step is to attach the shaft lock collars to the two inch bracket pins. Ensure that your bronze bushing flange is facing outward. Fully engage the shaft lock collar directly touching the bronze bushing flange. Then tighten the three set screws. Each cross member pivot pin has two shaft ring collars that will need to be installed. You have now completed the Globe Trekker Zero Torsion Subframe. Before heading the road, ensure your work area is free from tools and any spare hardware. You may now rest easy knowing you have built the best value foundation for your habitat. It has been engineered and FEA tested for structural soundness and durability. The frame has been professionally welded, bead blasted, painted with an epoxy primer and powder coated as a fully assembled unit giving the best in corrosion protection. The four oil impregnated bronze bushings are each rated at 40,000 pounds. Off-road with confidence, our fellow Globe Trekkers. Hey, so what did I say? I told you it was gonna be pretty awesome, right? Hey, you know what? Who else, who else puts this kind of detail into their subframes or even onto their website so that you can figure out how do I build this thing? Heck, you can't even find a price on half of these things. No, you have to call the company and they give you a price and then, oh, all of a sudden, well, there's a 30% duty on top of that. Or there's, you know, this kind of fee or that kind of fee. And pretty soon the low, low price that you thought you were gonna get in the very beginning is now up, 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 way up there. Do your research, <laughs> make sure that you get the best deal and the best value over time that you can possibly get. I know what my choice would be, but it's up to you to make your decision. Until next time, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless.